Good morning. So this morning we're in um, wonderful St Mary's Vale in Abergavenny and today I'm going to talk to you about the, what I feel is uh, the best value um, pro camera that, that money can buy and that is the Nikon Z7. It's just a fantastic camera for so many reasons and I thought I'd, as ever this is going to be a, a real world review. It's not going to be uh, um, looking at test charts and things like that. The Z7's been out for quite a long time now and I've been using it for uh, at least a couple of years. And um, I just wanted to really kind of share with you why I think it's a brilliant camera and really worth the money in 2023. And I think that, to be honest, there's not that much that can beat it for the money. Um, even all these kind of uh, new fangled multi-stack sensor smaller cameras I think the Z7 still has a really valid place. But when you're looking for, um, for something that really kind of communicates the colours to you then this camera does a brilliant job. It's, it's going to pick up on these textures and these details. Um, it's the kind of thing that when you, when you see in relation to, say, a phone, you just don't get that kind of uh, same colour rendition. next thing about this camera um, the image quality so it is a 45.7 megapixel full frame sensor and you know you, you get incredible amounts of um, uh, of uh, quality for that uh, the raw images are massive um, and full of dynamic range um, and that, it's a backlit sensor as well so it picks up more on the light do you need a stacked sensor, which is over kind of 100 megapixels? I don't think you do. Um, I think what you need is a sensor that, that really um, prioritizes on picking out those details, getting the sharpness out of the lens and the color rendition. And that's exactly what this thing does. So the Z7, the other thing that um, you need to talk about is weight. It is only 675 grams and that is literally half the weight of a DSLR and substantially lighter than most cameras. Wow, look at this beautiful tree. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm set up for the uh, next shot. This is fantastic tree here. Brilliant, an ancient tree that's clinging on to life. It's still alive. It's got an incredible uh, girth of a trunk. It's brilliant. Um, so, um, uh, photographing this kind of scene um, in woodland uh, with quite strong light, with, uh, with no mist, is always a bit tricky um, because it's very busy and cluttered and there's lots around it and it's very difficult to get any kind of feeling of image separation at all. Um, but let's take the shot anyway because I think that um, it is just a fabulous tree. So again, I'm going to go um, and uh, use my two second timer and I'm going to take a few exposures. 
So one of the key things about this camera, which is really, really important, is the functionality. And um, I'm going to take you through that. And that's one of the, the most important things to me. If a camera functions really well, that means everything is quick. It means everything. You don't need to think about anything in terms of like um, your, your settings or what button you need to press. You can just do it without giving it too much thought. Um, I think that's what makes your photography really good when you're just able to just use the camera almost like an extension of your eye rather than fiddling about and menus and, and, and buttons forever. You need to know what those buttons do and where they are. And I'll take you through that now. So there are two scrollers here and here. And I know quite a lot of cameras have two scrollers, but it makes a massive difference to what you're doing. So if you're shooting in manual, um, you've, got the, you've got the aperture on the front one, you've got the shutter speed on the back one. So you can easily change your, um, your, your shutter speed and aperture without really thinking. You've got the display on the back that's showing you all the time what your exposure is. Um, also the EVF um, is really, really good quality and it works really well. And what's brilliant about this is it shows the exposure in the viewfinder. So when you look in, you can see exactly what's going on with the um, shutter speed that, that you're choosing. Um, you can also, um, uh, you know, it, the, the functionality of the camera in terms of um, being able to um, change the functions of these buttons are really excellent as well. And I'll go into that in a second. At the back of the camera, there are various buttons that do various things. But most of the time, I just keep these to, um, uh, to, to the same settings. I really, really like the way, I know this is a simple thing, but you've just got play up here so you can see the photographs you've been taking. You can uh, zoom in and scroll through. Um, and you've also got delete right next to that, which is handy. Um, then over here, um, this back button focus button is a button that I use all the time and I've changed the functionality of it. So you can change the functionality of all of these buttons pretty much. Um, and this functionality I just find invaluable. So you can go to the area that you're focusing on and just press it. And you can see, is that area that you're focusing on completely in focus? And that works really, really well. Um, then we've got, um, Coming back here, um, so we've got the, the, the menu button and the shutter release buttons. So here is the um, shutter release menu, so you can go um, easily to two second timer, um, single shot and continuous high, which is what I use when I'm, I'm doing handhelds. Um, and then two second timer, just to make sure that you don't get any um, camera shake at all. Especially when you're, um, when you're uh, working on lower ISOs. So again, the ISO button here, you can just change that to the ISO you like. You can then make sure that if you're in, I'm in manual at the moment, I can see exactly what I want in terms of my exposure. And uh, that, that's depending, of course, on the, the, the aperture I'm choosing, the shutter speed and the ISO that I'm using to get the right exposure first time. Okay, um, uh, then there are, lots of other, um, there are lots of other useful buttons. The only other button that I'm really gonna talk about here is this info button. So we can see what the image quality is. Um, so you can easily change that to um, something else. So if you wanted to um, change it to a JPEG fine, for instance, or raw. And then you've got um, a host of other things like the, the, um, the, the, the picture type um, flash, two second timer, and various uh, metering. I won't go into all the, um, all the uh, systems, um, but what I will show you is the menu. So the menu is exactly the same menu you get on any other Nikon. It is really, really straightforward, and it allows you to um, go in depth in terms of, uh, you, can, um, you can really uh, custom everything. Like, as I was saying, you can customize everything um, in terms of um, the bracketing and the controls, and you can decide um, 
what button you want where. Um, but the, I think the, uh, the menu system is really, really um, straightforward and really, really easy to understand. And it's laid out with things that are a real priority. So, you know, you go to the top and uh, you've got a playback menu and you've got the shooting menu, um, movie shooting menu and custom settings and then your setup menu. Um, it makes sense, it's ordered and it works really, really well. Um, the other thing I really, really like on the front of here, on, on the front of the camera, are two buttons. And if you press and hold one of those buttons, I've set that up for bracketing. So you could have five brackets, three brackets, or no bracketing at all. It just makes doing bracketing really, really simple. Um, great thing about the back of the screen as well is you can take a shot by just touching the back of the screen and you can get your three exposures there and choose exactly where you want to select on your screen. All of these things just make the camera really, really easy to use. You've got the, you've got the same um, mode dial that you have on every other camera, um, just going from um, aperture priority, shutter priority, program and other user settings. And that works very, very well. So on the top of the camera, um, there's this brilliant OLED screen. And this is great uh, when you just want to take a quick setting, you're shooting from your belly, um, uh, you're shooting at night, you just want to see exactly what your settings are doing. It works so well and um, it's so effective. Then you've got the, um, the ISO button. Um, and when you press everything, it then isolates everything on the OLED, which is brilliant. You've got the movie record button here, and then you've got your um, exposure stops. Now, this is so handy to have these three right next to your shutter release. As I said, you've got this top scroller here, which is slightly more kind of chunky, and then you've got another top scroller there. Um, and then you've got your mode dial, it just makes it really instinctive to use and really easy to use. The next thing is, is the range of lenses. I mean, um, you don't get that many ranges in the Z, uh, that many lenses in the Z system, and that can be a little bit of an issue. But if you use the FTZ adapter, um, you can uh, uh, your world opens up to all the older Nikon lenses, and that works fantastic on this body. Um, and you know, the fact is, is you don't need loads of lenses. As a landscape photographer, um, two or three lenses um, for different um, focal ranges is more than enough. You need something telephoto, something wide. Um, and I think that uh, you can get slightly carried away with lenses. When you've got to carry it, it makes a really, really big difference. just walked literally 200 yards <laughs> and just saw this incredible view. Um, these beautiful trees kind of lyrically kind of um, reaching out across here. It's absolutely brilliant. So again, let's, uh, let's get the camera out and see what we can do. So um, the first thing is, let's just go handheld for a minute. So um, this scene, you can just work around the scene like this really, really easily. So I'm gonna shoot in manual. Um, I'm gonna use the EVF to set up my scene and I'm gonna go for F8. And then I'm gonna take it down to about, uh, I'm working ISO 400 at the moment. F8 in the 40th of a second. I might just take it down a bit more to the 60th. And then back up to 1 15th. Now, because this camera has got in-body stabilization, you can shoot 
at 1 15th even. Up, I've taken some shots that are literally um, up to about a sixth of a second and they do really well. This is the other brilliant thing about it. It's so, um, it's so light, but you're also able to, to use the IBIS inside the, um, inside the camera body. Now this lens hasn't even got um, a vibration reduction or anything like that, but the, the camera body allows you to do this. And it gives more versatility when you're out and about. It enables you to not always treat this as a kind of serious kind of set up on the tripod and spend hours looking at it type camera. You can just point and shoot with it. Um, I'm still using manual functions, um, but I'm easily, I've got my thumb and finger on here, I've got my ISO button here, and I can do everything within my EVF within a few seconds without having to think about it. And that stabilization, I find really good. Some people say it isn't very good. I haven't found that at all. I found that it's a, it's a major difference. So that, there, are, there are a lot of people kind of um, um, talking about DSLRs and how much better they are than mirrorless. But I really feel that you get the, the best of everything in this camera. You get a sensor that I'm pretty sure was built originally for the D850. So it's exactly the same. You get lightness you're able to see the exposure manually as you, um, as you record the scene, which to me is really, really important. Um, and you're able to have that, that lightness, the weather ceiling, but also the rigidity of the camera. So I think all in all, it's my favorite camera I've ever owned and the best Nikon I've ever owned. I don't think it's overrated. I think it's a great camera. These trees are a complete treat in this area. Look at these gorgeous branches. So I'm set up for another shot here. These trees are insane. They're just covered in moss and just reaching out in all directions. It's really beautiful. I'm so glad I came here. It's so near home relatively and uh, I've never been to this woodland before. It's fantastic. This is the kind of woodland that, um, that you need to just come back to again and again. And I think that's what I'm going to do. You never know. I might be back here next week. <laughs> it's just, I, I think with a little bit of mist, um, to just separate these trees away from the background a little bit, it would work so well. It's fantastic. Right. Okay. So again, here we are um, with the Nikon Z7. Um, so I've, I've made a composition where I've got uh, the majority of the tree here. There's some really nice light on the ferns there. And the first signs of autumn are, are coming through now. It's great. So, the Nikon Z7. Um, I think that this camera is one of the best um, pieces of equipment that you can buy for the money. I know it's not the cheapest, but color rendition, um, image sharpness and quality, uh, the, the intuitive ability to, um, to use the functions just quickly without faffing around in menu settings. Um, being able to uh, customise the button so you can make it exactly how you want it and the weight of this camera, all of those things combined just make it the best camera I think in terms of second-hand professional level cameras in 2023. So um, I've also made, a, uh, I've also made a, a, a video about my 24 to 70 which I'll put in the description above here. Until then please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.